you've got some issues with your partner, some things they're doing that are driving you crazy, or maybe it's some things they're not doing that have gotten under your skin. But every time you try to speak to them about it, you're met with anger, defensiveness, so you never feel like you get any resolution. In this episode of Ask Dr. Abby, I'm gonna share some tips to help you get out of the fighting rut and find some communication and understanding. So stay tuned. Hi again, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Abby Metcalf, which I know you know by now. I don't know why I ever say it, but there you go. Oh, I'm so happy to be with you here today. I'm excited about this question, as always. I'm always excited. Um, <laughs> because I get really stoked when I'm researching and looking and reading your emails and uh, I get really happy when I'm, you know, thinking, oh, I can really answer this and, ho and hopefully help, help you. So, and the question I'm going to read today is a bit specific, but you'll see, and I'll extrapolate it to everything. It, it's the same thing everywhere. It, it really is. Um, this was just relatively short. Some of y'all write in and it's a little long. It's hard for me to condense. So <laughs> this one was kind of short and easy and that's why I chose it. Uh, but again, you can send in your questions to abby at abbymedcalf.com or go to the Let's Connect page on the website and uh, I'll help you out. So let me have a little sip of water. And if you're not watching me on YouTube right now, you're missing my beautiful crushed velvet top. It's quite fabulous. Anyway, it's a little chilly here today in Northern California. <laughs> so, I, so I broke out the crushed velvet. Uh, all right, so let me get to the question. Here we go. And uh, here it goes. So my boyfriend and I have been together for six years. He's great in so many ways, but there's one thing we argue about constantly, video games. At night after work and on the weekends, he wants to play video games for hours. If we have something planned, he's down to go out and have fun. But if there's nothing on the agenda but the two of us at home, he goes right to gaming. If I suggest we watch a movie or a show together, he says it's boring. We don't like to watch the same kinds of things. Whenever I bring this up, he gets really defensive and angry and says he works hard and needs slash deserves some downtime. I'm okay with downtime for an hour maybe, but three or four hours? And a lot of times he doesn't go to bed and stays up late playing and then he's grumpy the next day with me. It's so unfair. It feels like he doesn't love me and only enjoys hanging out with me if we're doing something fun. I'm sick of being left alone every night to hang out with myself. How can I get him to listen and see that his video gaming is an addiction and he needs to stop? Woo! So again, you might not have a partner who plays video games, but you might have somebody who, you know, you, I don't know, after work, they don't help as much taking care of the kids or, uh, you know, maybe they say things to you that really bother you. You know, maybe they're critical. Maybe they're always comparing you to somebody else. Maybe, you know, we all have this stuff that they're either kind of doing or not doing. Often though, it is something like this where they're prioritizing something else and not us, and we are, you know, not very happy about it. So let, so I have a few tips and I really wanna go into them today. And there's a lot here, obviously, so we'll try to get to it all. Um, but, you know, first things first, she says, and I'm gonna call her, um, what should I call her today? I didn't think of a name beforehand. Uh, so how about Jackie? I think I've used Jackie before, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> So, and let's say his name is, is Stan. I like that. Jackie and Stan. I'm writing that down so I remember. All right. So here's Jackie at home at night, right, with Stan off playing these video games. And whenever she tries to talk to him about it or get him to do something else, he's sort of angry and defensive and just wants to go do his thing. And again, I think a lot of you can relate to that part, no matter what, no matter what else. Uh, so one of the things I'm noticing first is that she says he's great in so many ways, but there's this one thing we argue about constantly. So that's kind of my first tip for anyone is to figure out, first thing you gotta do is step back for a moment, take a breath and figure out why this particular thing is bothering you so much. So, you know, if you keep coming to your partner with this same issue, it means it's really bothering you. So. The first question to ask yourself is why? Why is this particular issue under your skin? Uh, what do you think it means? You know, how does it make you feel? I'm gonna keep hitting my water, so I'm gonna move it. And I know you can, you can listen to this and go, well, of course she's upset. He's playing video games for hours, it's obvious. 
Well, it's not. I actually know, uh, I have one couple I've worked with before. Their issue was that they both love gaming, and but they didn't like to do it together, but they would go in these separate rooms. So they were like away from each other the entire night. Um, and so we had to work on, and it was really undermining any connection they had because it's the same kind of thing. So they were happy that each other were playing video games <laughs> because it gave them permission to do the same. So you, there isn't a, I know we think into ourselves, well, of course this is bothering me. And it would bother anyone. I hear that a lot. Anybody would say this. My friends all think it's crazy. Screw that. It doesn't, it's not anyone. It's not whatever. There's lots of people who this, whatever this thing is, wouldn't bother. They wouldn't care about it. They would ignore it. Uh, same thing with, uh, you know, people are like, you know, maybe their partner is looking at uh, hot chicks on Instagram. I don't know, something like that. And they're thinking, well, anybody would be upset with that. Personally, I would not be. I don't care. Gary's not even on Instagram, so I guess I don't have to worry about it, but I don't care. That's not the stuff that bothers me. So that all I'm saying is it's okay. I mean, if it bothers you, it bothers you. I'm not judging that part. I'm just saying don't go to this thing that it's a fact that it would bother anybody because it's not. It's bothering you. And if you, you keep generalizing and globalizing it, you're missing the point, which is really how is this particular thing making you feel and why? Why does this is this really getting to you? So if my friend Jackie here was a total introvert and really needed hours alone at night to like recoup after work all day, she wouldn't be complaining about the video game. She'd be excited. She's like, oh, thank God, I don't have to like entertain this guy when I need some time alone. It's that she's looking to connect, which I'm not saying is wrong. I'm just saying, again, don't go in there with thinking this is the, it's a him problem. What I'm asking for is totally reasonable. We, we you got to get out of that right away. Cause you're setting, if you're setting it this, in this case, if you're setting him up to be wrong, well, of course he's going to be angry and defensive. Cause now you're just telling me I'm wrong and you're right. And then you get quite, you get responses like, well, you're not perfect either, you know, or the other day I tried to say something, but I wanted to have sex and then, but you didn't want to. And, you know, you get that attack back because you are, you're telling them that they're wrong and you, you've got to see, this is like, you know, again, we're fish who don't know we're wet. We don't realize we're doing this, that we, again, always think we're right. And we're assuming that our way of seeing things is the right way. Um, any reasonable person would agree, you know, that kind of thing. And that's a bunch of crap. You got to get rid of that. And again, get to, so what is this? And I would say Jackie obviously is feeling abandoned. So, so what does that hit for her? She's feeling unloved. What does that hit for her? Does that remind her of her family growing up? Is this a, a theme that's been in a lot of relationships? Is this the way maybe her dad treated her or her mom? Is uh, is she, it may be this, I've seen this a lot. I've seen, so uh, I'm thinking of another client I had who came from a super enmeshed household where they did everything together. And I mean, everything, <laughs> these people were like, I would consider very enmeshed. The kids were not allowed to have their own thoughts or feelings or ways of doing things. Everything was supposed to be shared at the family level with the, with the mom in particular, every trip, every, everything was always just the family. They were just all about that. So when she got married later, she was expecting this from her husband. We do everything together. We never are apart. We never, I mean, she used to follow him to the bathroom when he was showering and like to talk to him in the shower. <laughs> I, and again, to her, that's what meant you love somebody is if you are with them 24 seven and share every single little, and she would share every thought she had and every feeling she had about everything and was upset when he would get exhausted by that after a while. And again, you know, it's not like she was right and he was wrong or she was wrong and he was right. It's just, it's this assumption we make about what it all means what, what, why, why do I feel this? You know, what, what is this? So I really want you to think about it. You know, uh, maybe your partner doesn't seem interested in sex. I get this a lot. So a partner doesn't seem interested in sex and you're upset that they're not initiating anything or flirting or complimenting you. So, and then you get upset. What, and I hear things like, uh, you know, uh, he, he doesn't, he doesn't think I'm attractive anymore, or she doesn't uh, love me. She never wants to, you know, you know, be with me. Um, she's always swatting me away. You know, I hear this kind of stuff either way. There's a lot of women who want more sex than men too. So get rid of that thought that it's just men. 
And, or, you know, maybe women not being told they're beautiful anymore and thinking he doesn't think I'm attractive or he thinks I'm fat or all kinds of things. Again, you're, it's getting, it's triggering something. You're, you're labeling it as something, you're deciding it means something, and then you're getting triggered by that feeling, by that meaning you're assigning to it. So look at what you're, the meaning that you're assigning to it. And I could even say here, you know, she's telling me he's so great in so many ways. So where is he meeting her needs, you know, and is this that important? Is there a way to have your evenings different? I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying, let it at least be a question. Like, how else could this be that, you know, I'm getting all these things. I had a, another client who um, was married and her husband worked a ton and they were uh, just together a couple of years. They hadn't had kids yet, but, uh, and she didn't have the work he, he made a lot a lot of money and he um and she was very happy not to work by the way so she was pretty excited about it you know she uh or i should say work in a traditional sense she she was an artist and she really loved having this support to do her art and to really not have to like you know think i have to sell it and to just really express herself this way she was really happy about it and in all ways they got along very well she would say it to me all the time he's such a great guy but he never planned trips or anything he, and she asked him so many times, she's like, could you just plan our next vacation? Could you plan, even on her birthday, he wasn't so great at planning things. Like, could you plan on my birthday? Could you plan on our anniversary? I always plan things on our anniversaries. You know, could you do this? Plan our vacations. And he just didn't. He was never stepping up to the plate to do it. And when I met with her, she was very upset about this. And I was like, you know, <laughs> why is that so important? What does that mean to you? Here's a person like, you're, doesn't your like you get to do your art you you don't you know thank god have to work out you know to make money you're really able to have all this freedom and time and he did not begrudge her and she would admit that a second of it he was very happy that she was happy he wanted her to be happy he, he was very into her and he just sucked at this part but she was labeling it as something else it means he doesn't love me it means this it means that meanwhile obviously he was showing her in a million ways that he loved her now somebody listening right now is going oh my god i'd kill to be her i would never complain about that i'd plan everything yeah but this is what i'm saying that doesn't bother you but it was bothering her because again she had thoughts about it and feelings about it remember we feel the way we think so whatever you're thinking about something whatever you believe it means is how you're going to feel about it and when you come to your partner from fear you're going to get fear back unless your partner's the Dalai Lama you're probably going to get some fear back and I'm not saying you don't want your communication level better or your sex life to change but it does mean you have to approach it from a more patient compassionate empathetic place that that's what it means it means you have to to think about this differently and just and think about again like so when you can think about what's happening like so when I was talking I keep saying like excuse me when I was talking to this last client I mentioned about her partner and I said well how else can you see this how else can you see how he shows he loves you and all those things and of course we went back to her childhood and the way her parents were I mean it was once we talked about it more it was very obvious to her and she also was doing some self-sabotage. She didn't feel worthy of all this love and, and you know, affection and, and generosity. She did not feel worthy of it. And so she was sort of self-sabotaging. She was like picking at this one thing. And uh, over and over, it's like, well, something must be wrong. So I, you know, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Nobody, no man is this wonderful to me. I don't deserve it. Or no man is this wonderful. Men aren't like this. So I'm going to find the wrong thing before. And so I don't get the rug pulled out from under me later. I'm going to find it first and I'm going to go after it. I'll show you. I know. And again, we're just trying to prove ourselves right. And it really gets us into trouble. And, and part of that not labeling you know what something means or what it is is also not labeling your partner so here you know she our jackie says all these things right and then she says i'm sick of being left alone every night to hang out with myself right that's the issue she doesn't like being alone at night with herself you know without him right that and i'm sure she's feeling like these video games are more important than me i think that's really what it is and that's what's upsetting her so much but then she jumps into this blame how can I get him to listen? First of all, ooh, good luck with that. If you find out how to make men listen, give me a call. Uh, 
and see that his video gaming is an addiction he needs to stop. So she's decided this is an addiction. I bet she has said that to him. You're addicted to video games. You know, you're this, you're that. Nobody wants to hear this in this way. That is not, you're going to get pushed back in a million ways. It's like telling someone they're alcoholic or anything else. Uh, you're a narcissist. You're bipolar. You're unfeeling. You're mean. You're this, you're that. As soon as you start doing that, I don't know how you're expecting anything to great to come from that. Again, it's from your fear. And by the way, not for nothing, but there's those of us who have an actual degree who should be doing the diagnosing, not you. I say with love. I know Google is its own degree, but it's not. There's a lot of things. I, those terms get thrown around, addiction and narcissist and bipolar. And it's like people have no idea what it really is. So please don't do that. Please don't decide. And while you're doing is you're so mad and hurt that you're lashing out. You are deciding that they are all wrong. This is all them and they need to change. And nothing is ever all anybody. It's not all you either, but it's not all, it ain't all them. So how do you slow that down, right? Don't tell them or don't tell them that they don't love you or that they're, or, you know, I hear that a lot. You know, you don't love me. You know, you don't love me. They, they say, don't say that. Stop that. <laughs> Again, you're lashing out. You're, you're a hurt you're hurt and you're looking for some, you're looking for them to say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. It's okay. You're looking for the affirmation. You're looking for them to, uh, you know, tell you that you're wrong. And that's from fear. That is from your insecurity. And that's not love. So, it, and again, it's a surefire way to get defensiveness. It's like telling someone they're acting defensively usually gets you defensiveness, right? It's not, it's not helpful. So instead of saying something like you're being defensive, my favorite thing is to always, when you're noticing that, because you're mindful, because you're doing all the things I say to do about being mindful, you're in the conversation and you're, and you're really paying attention. Instead, when I, when I find that, I stop and I say, can, it's like, hold on, what, what are you feeling right now? And usually you'll hear it. I'm feeling attacked, which by the way, isn't a feeling really, but I'm feeling attacked, you know, but I, I get, well, I'm feeling attacked. I, I, well, I don't know if that's a real feeling. Mad, sad, angry, glad, you know, shy, content, overwhelmed. Those are feelings. Um, and you can ask for more. But even if you just ask that and you get, I'm feeling attacked, that should tell you. And don't tell them, no, you're, I'm not attacking you. <laughs> Again, it doesn't work the other way, does it? If, if you're feeling attacked and someone says, you're being too whatever, you're being too sensitive, I'm not attacking you. You don't feel like, oh, you're right, sorry. So why are you saying it to someone else? It, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. I'm sorry. I say with love. So stop being so sure you're right and know what's happening and, and know what they're feeling and what they're saying and why. And start being curious and open to possibilities. Once you get out of that idea that what, you know, once Jackie gets out of the idea that what he's doing is wrong and what she wants is right, then things are really going to change. And again, it doesn't mean she doesn't want more time with him. It doesn't mean she's not looking for more connection. It means she's not deciding what that should look like and how it should look and what it means that he's not doing it. That's what it means. So, and this is one of the hardest things to do. We just, you know, it's, and it's, very American culture, but I found it in couples I work with all around the world. It's pretty common, this idea that you have to blame someone when something's not right, you know, and it's usually not you. Uh, or then, it, or if it is you, you know, you beat the crap out of yourself and that's not really cool either. That's not what we're doing either. So get, so take a breath and get open and get curious about what's going on. Okay. So let me get on to my next tip. <laughs> So the next thing I would say, and I talk about picking your time, place, and feeling. I know. Time, place, and feeling. So as you might imagine, there are a few pieces to this one. So, and some of this is just the low-hanging fruit. Don't have the discussion when the thing you're upset about is happening. So I would tell Jackie, if he, you know, if Stan is in there watching video games, don't go in and tell him how upset you are that he's watching video games. That is not the time. Or if he says, oh, I'm going to go watch video games to right there, go, oh, I can't believe you're doing that. I, you know, da, da, da. that is not the time. Stan is already set for the video games. This is not your moment to, to go here. So what you want to do for sure is pick a time when you're both feeling fresh. And at the end of a long day is never the time. I, it makes me crazy when couples are having arguments for three hours till two in the morning or something. <sighs> no. 
Just like, you know, Chris Rock says you should never be at an ATM at two in the morning because <laughs> there's nothing good you're getting the money out for. There's no good argument you're having at two in the morning either. It, I don't care if you're a night person. I don't care. Oh, it's the only time we get to talk. Nope, nope. The, even that, if that, if you think this is the only time you ever get to talk, then that's the problem in the relationship. You've got to be kidding me. You're both just waiting till the very end of the day before you're making something a priority. So don't get me started. That's a whole other thing. But you got to pick a time when you're, there's something a little more fresh going on. There's a little more energy going on. And what do I say a lot? You have to connect to correct. You got to pick a time when you're feeling connected to bring up whatever the thing is. And I'm going to tell you the way to bring it up in my final tip. But you, you, you can't be in a bad place and then bring up this thing you want your partner to change. It's not, they don't, for what? You're shitty to me. Why do I want to change for you? I don't like how you're acting. You're mean to me. That's what they're thinking. I'm not saying you are. But you know what I mean? They're angry. They're whatever. They're going to change for you. You've been nagging them or complaining about something or coming at them with how you feel or whatever they can't handle. And so, again, you got to connect to correct. So you have to find a time when they're, because as Jackie said here, he's a great man in so many ways. And she talks about how he's always down <laughs> to go out at night if they're doing something, right? So there's plenty of times when they're actually connected in some way, you know, when things are good. Uh, and I'll talk a little more about that too, because there's a way you even want to do that. But anyway, uh, I also want you to pick a place that's not volatile. I, it's, sometimes it's a great idea to have a conversation outside the house, maybe in a car, on a walk. If you always have really serious conversations sitting at your kitchen table and they don't go well, you don't want to keep sitting at your kitchen table to have conversations. Our, our brains remember things. Our brains trigger into the architecture around us, to what's going on around. It's the same way that if you really want to get good at studying, you should set up your desk the same way. You should sit in the same place and do your studying in the same place every day. You're, you're, we have muscle memory in a way. And so our brains immediately get keyed into something by our surrounding. When I come to work and I sit in front of my computer, I am like, on man because I've done so much good work here I do so much research and talking and doing the podcast and all that I am so productive and creative in this spot so when I come in here it's like I don't have to try hard it's just right there because I've been doing it for so long whereas when I try to work other places I can work other places you know like a coffee shop or something well before the pandemic um, or maybe even at home sometimes but there's never a time I'm more productive than when I come to work that's for sure it's just amazing so it's the same thing you have to really think about you know hey this doesn't really work um, to always be arguing at home in the house you know or having conversations I should say at home in the house let me find another place and the other piece piece with this is that you want to make sure you're at the same place emotionally and this kind of, I was, I was referring to this before. Don't blindside your partner with something. So, so let's say you're connecting. You're out at a bar, <laughs> having fun. Like Gary and I, we like to have dinner often at, at a bar, at the bar, because we like to talk to the bartenders and there's always people at the bar and they'll start talking to you. It's very, it's much more social than when you're sitting alone at a table. So we like to sit at the bar together and we're also right next to each other, which we love. We can touch each other and we just, we dig that, you know? And, but if you're, so if you're there and you're doing that, but if you're like, now for us, we're not necessarily so engrossed in a game or something. So we actually do have some really great conversations at the bar because it is kind of the two of us in a bubble. Sometimes, sometimes it's not. Sometimes he is watching a game. He's really into it. If his Jets are playing, yeah, the Jets, I know, lifelong, he's a New Yorker too, <laughs> lifelong Jet fan. Any of you football people are feeling sorry for him. You know, he's a real fan because he loves the Jets. Uh, but if a jet game was on, I wouldn't try to bring up something more emotional or that where I needed to connect with him. So, so yes, we're connected right now in a way because we're having fun and we're out and it's really nice and we're touching. But his attention and his headspace is in a completely different place. He is watching his jets. He is consumed. He can barely hear me. Trust me. So if I jump in with the conversation, right? If I jump in with the issue, whatever it is, right here, I'm probably going to get anger or defensiveness or I, I'm going to get like a non-response because he's not really listening and then I'm going to get hurt and didn't you listen to me and you're just in kind of a crappy place. So you you, you want to be mindful about um, 
where that, how that connection is happening, how it feels. You know, again, when you're mindful, you can pay attention to this and you'll know the difference. I promise. When you're mindful, you'll know the difference. It'll feel different. You'll drop into something a little differently. You'll feel that connection. So, and that gets into my, my next tip, probably my final one. You know me. I think it's my final. Might be more. Whenever you're coming to your partner with something that's bugging you, You have to tell them what you want, not what you don't want. And I've said this before, I'm going to say it again so you can really hear me. The big mistake I think most people make is that they jump in with the judgment and the criticism as they tell their partner what they're doing that's bugging them. Hence, right, remember, hence wrong, with the wrong thing their partner is doing. (laughs) And again, to me, that's like an open invitation for defensiveness and anger. So instead... You Again, you want to be in a connected place. You want to set up all the pieces well, right? And so you're, and you're coming from a more loving, calm place when you do that, by the way, which is really great. And instead, you might start, just start with a question that's around what you're thinking of. Or just start with what you want to see more of. Or you can combine it as a question of what you want to see more of. <laughs> but... That's really like, so Jackie is looking for connection. She's looking for um, some maybe affection. What else is she looking for? What does connection mean to her? Is it that they're talking? Because if you're just sitting side by side watching the same movie, I don't really, and you're not talking, I don't know that that's any more connecting than you going in and seeing if you could sit next to him while he plays video games and I don't know, doing something else. I'll tell you, Gary a lot likes to watch a game, you know, and I do like to sit with him while he's doing that, but I'm not watching the game. I'm not watching football. I'm not a football fan. It's baseball I'm watching, but not football. So I'll bring something kind of to do. I'll either, you know, do a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle on my big iPad, or I'll, you know, I'll play a game on my phone, or I'll, I'll do something that's kind of mindless where I can sort of pay attention to him in the game. I can interact. It's not, I don't sit there and like do work. You know, I, I don't try to like, you know, write up a podcast episode necessarily. But I but I sit in his space with him and we're touching and we're talking a little bit and I can easily come out of my game and listen or go back in. I, you know, that's kind of how we do it. Now with video games, it's very different because I think you're just so, you know, they're just so focused. But there are little breaks in video games, you know. You could have a little kissing break in between a kill or something. I don't know what you're playing, but you know what I mean. Uh, there, There's ways to do it. And so... It might be something like, um, you know, again, when you're in a good place, hey, babe, I'm, I'm missing you. I want to connect a little bit. When can I have some time for just the two of us today or later? Or, you know, like when can that happen? You might, you might do it that way. You might um, just, you know, talk about like, hey, uh, I want to, uh, well, I've used this question before with sex. You know, what would you like to see more of in our sex life? You know? Uh, what would you like to see more of in our relationship is another one. You know, you can just ask that. What, what would you like to see more of in the relationship? How, when do you feel most connected to me? What am I doing that you're like, this is my person. Like, this is my person. What am I saying to you? Find out that. Get inquisitive. Because again, when you can figure that out, you can figure out a good time to talk to them about <laughs> whatever's bothering you, by the way. Um, But as you start to ask questions, it's very natural for the other person, not always right away, so don't get too caught up in this, but it's kind of natural for them at some point to ask. Sometimes they'll just say, well, why are you asking that? You know, and they're, because they're so worried that they're now going to get pounced on. And you really, and don't, don't bite the bait. Just say, you know, I don't know. I just, I really like, I want to feel more connected to you. So um, that's where I'm starting. So, so you can bite the bait a little, but don't go into what they're doing wrong. It's not like, well, you've just been playing video games all the time and I feel so disconnected. To instead just say, I'm just looking for ways to feel more connected to you. So I'm looking for how you feel more connected. You know, I, I love you and I, I just want to have, I want to deepen our connection. I'm always looking for ways. So I figure the best person to ask is you. And there you go, you know, and then you're starting that conversation and you're leaving aside this hot topic of the video game or the not helping at night with the kids or the, and I'm not saying you can't get there at some point. I'm saying you can't start there. If people jump in so quickly with the big hot button topic, but there's not enough groundwork. There's not enough foundation on the house to get there. So you're trying to build the second floor of your house and you don't have a good foundation. So it keeps falling down. You, you got to work on the foundation. And if you're impatient about it, if you're, you know, that's fear. 
Why are you so impatient? You got the rest of your lives together. You got lots of time. In the meantime, go to a yoga class. Go take care of yourself. Go get a mani-pedi. Go work out. Go uh, get a massage. Go hang out with a friend. There's a million things you could do, or Jackie could do in this case, instead of sitting around alone waiting for Stan. She could have her own life. She could be building her own things. She could find, maybe she'll try a video game. See if you like it. Uh, t- take up an instrument. Learn a language. There's a frigging gazillion things to do. And again, don't decide that him playing video games for hours is too much. You know, instead start talking to him about, again, what you want. And you might just say, hey, before you play video games tonight, can we have uh, an hour together? or a half hour together. Start wherever you think you can. You know, before you play. Hey, can I have a little time with you before you start? I know you're gonna go in for your video games. I know you love it. Go ahead, be you. But I, I want some time to connect before. And then before I go to bed, because I usually go to bed before you, um, can I check in and you can stop for a minute and we can just say goodnight? You know, that's, I've had a lot of clients do this because I've had this video game issue come up quite a bit. And it works really well. They're like, sure, because they're sort of, you know, they're getting to do this thing they want and they're seeing you sort of agreeing with them that it's okay. And again, you might not agree that it's okay, but this is right now what this person needs in this moment. And I can't tell you all the reasons why, but I know that once you start connecting more and talking more, you might be able to find out why the video games are so important or the drinking or the whatever else it is. And again, if it's impeding your life to such a degree, obviously you can make boundaries around it. Um, But this is a boundary right here. Like, um, you know, hey, I'd like to spend this amount of time with you before you start playing and I'd like to be able to say goodnight. And if they tell you that's too much, you know, talk to them. Like, talk to me more. What, you know, tell me what feels too much about that. You know, give me more information. I have i don't think I've ever had someone say it felt too much because it's, you know, pretty reasonable. If your partner is drinking and you don't like it, you can, again, draw boundaries and say, um, hey, you know, i if you're drinking it, I don't want us really drinking at dinner. If you really want to drink at dinner, I'm, I just... I don't feel like I can eat with you. You know, I love you. Or maybe we could have a few minutes together before and then I'll finish my dinner and leave and you can drink. You know, like you can just have a boundary. State what you need within what's happening. So not, the need can't be you have to stop whatever you're doing. The need needs to be, here's what I'm going to do if this continues. And again, it needs to be from love, loving detachment. It can't be from anger and F you and punishment and, you know, bringing down the hammer. It just is your boundary. And you just say it with love, like, you know, and they might argue with you. Oh, I don't drink that much. Why are you so upset about it? And you say, I'm just telling you what I need. If you don't want to do it, it's totally fine, but I'm not going to argue with you about it. This is something I need. So I'm, I'm letting you know. That's it. Stop getting in the conversation if you don't want to be in the conversation. You don't have to get dragged into something. So just state what you need and be done. Okay. So that's kind of all I have for Jackie and Stan today. Um, Hopefully this helped you have some little tips for how to start really, you know, getting into different kinds of conversations with your partner about things that are bothering you, having sort of a different twist on it so you can come at it differently And of course, again, then you have to use, once you're connected and once you're really talking, you do have to use all your other great tools because now you're going to, at some point, have a deeper conversation, which is great. So, you know, you can listen, you can listen to other episodes I have, how to listen without getting defensive or hurt, you know, because you're going to have to do some listening too uh, about this. There's, I have tons of stuff on how to communicate, how to stop fighting. So you can listen to those and have those tools at the ready. But this is like the... You know, this is prepping the room for painting. (laughs) And then you're going to go paint. You know, you get in the room ready, you're getting things set up, and you're really building that foundation because that's that's what this is all about. Okay. All right. That is it for today. I'm really, really, really happy you were with me. I know there's a lot of places you could be today, a lot of ways you could be spending your time, and I always really love and appreciate when you spend it with me. So if you haven't yet, please review or, uh, you know, 
um, give a rating for the podcast. It's really important to me. Uh, really helps other people find out about the podcast. And, uh, you know, just helps us in, in a number of ways. So if you want to support me, if you feel supported and want to support me, this is the one thing you can really do that would really have a big value add. So please, 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 uh, now that you're at the end, just go right now. Rate on Spotify, review on Apple Podcasts, and um, that's it. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I will talk to you real soon.